Hello, my uh, name is Roxana Dronka. I'm a medical oncologist practicing at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I am a senior associate consultant on the oncology service and I am also an assistant professor of oncology at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine. I will discuss our article entitled uh, Melanoma Brain Metastasis and Vemurafenib Need for Further Investigation. This report describes our experience with three patients with BRAF uh, mutated metastatic melanoma in whom progression or de novo development of CNS metastasis developed during treatment with vemurafenib despite the significant and concomitant extracranial disease response. In all three patients, the peripheral response and progression of brain metastatic disease was observed early within two to three months of initiating BRAF targeted therapy. Two of the uh, three patients in this report had been previously diagnosed with brain metastasis and had been treated with stereotactic radiosurgery, while in the third patient, brain metastatic disease developed de novo within weeks of initiating therapy. The mirafenib, the only FDA-approved uh, BRAF inhibitor available in clinical practice, inhibits a specific mutation, V600, in the BRAF gene, which is present in approximately 50% of melanomas, and locks the uh, BRAF in its active conformation, enhancing the cancer cell's ability to proliferate, grow, and survive, and vemurafenib inhibits this unwanted activity. While it is not a cure for metastatic melanoma, clinical studies with vemurafenib have shown that the drug has significant and dramatic and often immediate, within weeks, anti-tumor activity in more than 50% or close to 50% of patients with BRAF mutated metastatic melanoma, often with less side effects than chemotherapy and therefore prolonging not only the lifespan but the productive lifespan of these patients. I think this is important because BRAF mutations are most commonly seen in young patients. However, the clinical studies with vemurafenib so far have not included patients with untreated brain metastasis, and therefore our knowledge regarding the use of this agent in this patient population, it is, very, it is limited to a few published case reports. Our group has previously reported clinical activity of vemurafenib in a 16-year-old patient with rapidly progressive brain metastasis after stereotactic radiosurgery. In this report, we describe three patients in whom progression or the novo development of brain metastasis was observed during treatment with vemurafenib despite significant extracranial disease response. The uh, mechanism of this differential response between the periphery and the brain, it is as of yet not known. We do not know if we're dealing with restricted resistant subclones in some patients or restriction of emirafenib diffusion in the brain due to active drug efflux or whether there is differential blood-brain barrier penetration between uh, or in children and adolescents as uh, compared to adult individuals or in patients with certain pathological conditions, for instance, hypoxic or inflammatory brain insults. Therefore, I believe that what this observation, clinical observation tells us is that we as oncologists uh, should be uh, careful in using drugs in settings where we do not know the drug's efficacy and that uh, active, continued active surveillance for intracranial progression despite uh, peripheral disease response to BRAF targeted therapy is uh, warranted. I think this uh, is important because brain metastases are a very important problem in patients with melanoma. At uh, diagnosis of metastatic disease, one in five patients do have brain metastases, and they develop during the course of the illness in nearly three-quarters of patients. Once brain is involved, the average survival of um, the average survival is usually less than six months, and these lesions contribute to death in up to 95 percent of patients. With um, uh, the approval of two new agents, uh, two effective agents for um, metastatic melanoma in 2011, ipilimumab, a T-cell lymphocyte antibody, um, a T-lymphocyte activating antibody, and vemurafenib, a BRAF-targeted inhibitor, the average survival of patients with melanoma, metastatic melanoma, has been significantly prolonged. Therefore, as patients with advanced melanoma live longer, the incidence of brain metastasis is likely to increase. Therefore, um, uh, management of patients with brain metastasis remains a significant uh, challenge. 
uh, treatments such as whole brain radiation therapy, surgery, stereotactic radiation have been um, and are classically uh, used. However, the efficacy of the new drugs is not known and therefore I believe that it's important to encourage patient, patients to participate in clinical trials. A clinical trial with studying the efficacy and safety of emurafenib in patients with brain metastasis is currently um, underway and enrolling patients at many centers in the U.S., including Mayo Clinic. Also, another BRAF inhibitor, uh, dabrafenib, is being studied for this indication and um, pre preliminary results have been reported at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting in June of this year. I believe that these trials will give uh, physicians and uh, oncologists the answers regarding the efficacy of uh, BRAF targeted therapies in patients with brain metastasis. Regarding our report, I believe that the uh, anecdotal nature of the uh, evidence presented does not allow us to draw definitive conclusions regarding the efficacy of emurafenib in melanoma brain metastasis. However, we recognize that this is an important, remains an important challenge in the management of patients with melanoma, and physicians are highly encouraged to maintain a high index of suspicion, and patients should be actively monitored for signs of intracranial disease progression despite a peripheral response to vemurafenib or other BRAF targeted agents. Without a doubt, more studies are needed before making broad recommendations and therefore patients with advanced melanoma and brain metastasis are highly encouraged to participate in clinical trials. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.